Next up is number eight, Owen Hendricks with his mom, Kim. Next up is number 17, Lucian Marks with his dad, Gregory. And last but not least, number 22, Coleman Warner with Coach Sasasimo. For the Hall Seniors. Hey Andy, yeah, can we get started with the Hall Seniors? Thank you. I was talking to somebody. First up, <laughs> no, I don't have here. Number first one up is Kyle Conlon with his parents Don and Terry. we can get started on time. Next up is Peter Figgy with his parents Peter and Sarah. Well these schools are in West Hartford, right? Yep. It's on the other sides of town? Yep. Next up is Chris Monis. Yeah. Do you guys actually parents, have cross town rivals? Yep. <laughs> That's poetic. Next we have Will Weberson with his parents Steve and Anna. Next up is Andrew Crivetti with his mom Martina and his brother Todd. Next up is Evan Duzan with his mom, Lori. <laughs> Next up is J.P. Hurst with his parents, Laura and Matt. Next up is Theo Blaschinski with his parents, Dennis and Ellen. Next up is Kyle McGoldrick with his parents, Marilyn and Mike. double senior recognition here. We've got Matt Cashman and Will Miller accompanied by Coach Bond. Thanks everybody. Big round of applause for all the seniors and all the families. Many years of fun.
and hard work. We'll try to get the starting lineups going pretty quickly here. like this around your football field, this little fence. Yep. That's cool. That is interesting. For all, all them straight footballs. Things just Oh, really? Oh, so do they not, did they only couple put up in this game? We'll be starting with the Connor starting line. To be fair, for... having a lacrosse ball for all that year is <laughs> quite painful. Mayor. You get paid for this? No, I'm an intern. Mayor. Mayor it is. Yo. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, do you want me to go down to the other one? Do you want me to stay up here? So you good up here? Alright. Okay, no, I'm I'm an, I was an intern all uh, semester with uh, WAC TV and then they need help throughout the summer, but when I have days off. I don't mind helping. It's a good experience. Now, how'd you get up into doing this? Uh, I don't really know. It just happened. Just, just like, like we have the uh, players uh, line up for the starting lineup, please. Do you guys have like a, like a TV production or like Or do you just, are you just a camera guy? As your name is called, to come up to the uh, 40 or 45 yard line, please. All right, for the counter chieftain, at attack, yep. captain number 21, Henry Nidal. Oh, at attack number two, Ben Hallerbach. Oh, at attack number three, Luke Serdekny. Oh, at midi, number 23, John Gibbons. So this allows me to talk to my director. At midi, number 19, Johnny Lagoy. At mini number 28, Gabe Suarez. On defense, captain number 15, Sam LaFonte. On defense, number 10, Aiden Stafford. On defense, number 18, Cole Johnson. In goal, number 30, Ramsey Henderson. Head coach, Max Sosimo. Assisted by Peter Pepper and Steve Garneau. Now for your Hall High Warriors. At attack, number four, Chris Monis. At attack, number eight, Barrett, Barrett Kanega. At attack, number 18, Graham Kennedy. Andrew Graviti. <laughs> On defense, number 29, Evan Duzan. <laughs> and on defense, number 38, Hugh Wells. Also in long stick midi, number 5, Drew Booth. And in goal, number 19, Alan Horner. <laughs> Head coach, Ben Von Meyerhauser, and assistant coach, Brett Garber. Can everyone please rise for the playing of our national anthem? Take your hats off. Take a moment to remember all the brave men and women serving all around the country to guarantee the freedom for us to enjoy a day like this. Thank you.
Lost Day in West Hartford as Channel 5 and the War Chief Sports Council proud to present West Hartford High School Sports. It's doubleheader action. First up, the boys as the Hall Warriors host the Connor Chieftains. Welcome to Chalmers Stadium, everybody. Pete Lamoureux along with Steve Boyle and our fine Channel 5 crew. So glad you joined us on this 92 degree early summer afternoon. Both these teams headed to the state tournament in Class L. Matt Sersasimo, his first year as the head coach, replacing the legendary Bill Condon, was at the helm for 25 seasons at Connor. And Matt has his team at 7-7. Seven and seven. They had a five-game winning streak earlier before losing their last two. For Hall, they come in at 6-7 and seven for second-year head coach Ben Von Meyerhauser. And the Warriors come off a lopsided victory over Southington in their last outing, 16-7. to seven. Pleased to be working again with Steve Boyle. And, Steve, when we talk about Hall across, we start with number three, Theo Blashinsky, a team high 31 goals on the season. Yeah, that's certainly a number uh, that a lot of coaches would like to be able to predict in the beginning of the season. Uh, full disclosure, I had Ben Von Meyerhauser as my assistant uh, for a year and um, absolutely adore him as a person and as a coach. And you, sometimes you get to know current players uh, through the eyes of a coach. And uh, Coach Von Meyerhauser certainly loves Theo Blachinski. It's a name he uh, brings up to me often. He's known him on the football field as well as the lacrosse field now for a okay. couple of years. And uh, I think uh, he, he, he sees a lot of himself in Theo. And uh, sometimes that means button heads, but it also means um, really believing in the young man and, uh, and, and adoring him. Because that's the word that often comes from Coach Von about Theo. Just about set for the face-off here will be John Lagoy against Shea Friedman as we get set to get things underway. First of two for you here on Channel 5. We'll have the girls game tonight after 6. We're underway, and it's controlled by Connor. Sebastian Suarez, the first to touch it, and he gets it back and tries to lead the attack out for this Connor team. So that was the face-off that Connor won there. In the girls' game, you'll hear it called the draw. and the boys, it's called the face-off. You'll often get a lot of dads that'll call the girls' game a draw. That's a nice save right there and an uh, attempt at a clear um, going back to Connor, though. And that initial save by Alan Horner, the junior, who, uh, according to uh, Coach Ben, very, very consistent, hard worker and has about 48% as a save percentage for the current season. Yeah, that's, that's certainly a, a crazy number, 48%. Uh, you know, when you consider the speed at which this ball is coming, uh, goalie in, in any sport is uh, one of the most valuable positions. That's a nice bounce shot there by number three on Connor Luke Serdensky. Uh, and he's got his 22nd of the season, Steve. Uh, we were talking about Theo Bolashinsky on the hall side, leading with 31 goals. He's the leader for Connor now with 22 on the season. Yeah, that's a nice little shot there in that, you know, it's one of the hardest ones to handle as a goalie is that bounce shot because it's hard to predict, and especially early on in the game, to the trajectory off the bounce. And believe it or not, hot days can impact the way the ball's going to work, the way the field's going to work. Um, while we're 92 degrees up here in the press box, I guarantee it's probably measuring about 100 down there. Ben Hollerbach got the assist. Connor wins another faceoff. And uh, here they go on the attack, trying to increase their lead. We talked about the five game winning streak that they had. That all started with an 8 7 double overtime win over Northwest. Really spurred them on, and according to Coach Sersosimo, really led to a, a good season for them. Yeah, I, I think like any sport, you. Uh Winning breeds confidence, and uh, lacrosse is definitely a momentum game. What you'll find is people will get complacent with five or six goal leads, and the next thing you know, they've let up because it's definitely in the same way it's a game of streaks uh, during the actual game. It can be a streaky sport in terms of the way your season works as well. And no shame, of course, losing to Cheshire and Glastonbury in their last two. Absolutely. Traditional powerhouses, those are the kind of games that, that coaches actually like to have late in their schedule. Uh, while certainly some like to schedule wins, good coaches like to schedule competition to get you postseason ready. And Coach Rosasimo is certainly a good coach. There's a shot and they score! Gabe Suarez able to connect and countered off and running with a 2 0 lead. Yeah, I think that's one that Horner would certainly like to have back. It's a good shot. He was probably anticipating, in that case, a bounce, and it just came in right at, right at the toes and uh, slid in. Uh, you know, being a goalie, is, it's a lot of timing, a lot of rhythm, and, uh, you know, he'll, he'll get his groove back. Once he gets a nice save, uh, again, he'll, he'll be able to find his rhythm there. Sir Deckney gets the assist, so already a goal and an assist, and the game just two minutes and two seconds old here in the opening quarter. 
John sure. Lagoy, I'm sorry, Steve, trying to win his third consecutive faceoff. 61% on the faceoffs this year for him. You know, it's this is one of those sports that you, there's no guarantee you're ever going to get the ball back. Uh, Faceoff in, in lacrosse means so much. It looked like a false start on Connor. He went in a, before the whistle. It's automatic turnover to Hall. So Hall faceoff uh, man comes off the field, and um, we got a replacement midfielder now. Want to talk about the uh, Hall faceoff guy as well, Shea Friedman, 59% on the campaign. So a battle of uh, two young men who are excellent in the circle, as it were. Just underway, 9.40 to go, opening quarter. Hall with the ball, and they trail by the count of 2 nothing. An early surge here for the counter chieftains. Yeah, and again, possession matters more than anything else. I mean, we talk about it in football. If the team's going to possess the ball 75 80% of the game, they're likely going to win. But what happens in a sport like basketball, the other team scores, you're going to at least get the ball back and have an opportunity. In lacrosse, you could score 10 in a row, and the other team may never get the ball if you continue to win face-off. So it's why the face-off is so important and why limiting turnovers is key. Just saw that pass from Chris Monas to Jack McHale. Monas is the one that uh, directs all of his action from behind the net. This is Max Congdon playing catch on the perimeter with Jack McHale for the Warriors. Again, full disclosure, I don't know the boys' game as well as I do the girls, but one of the things that translates well for anybody who's a novice to the sport is it really is an awful lot like basketball. Right now they're running some motion sets, trying to get some, uh, trying to get some isolations. You'll see some screens that are thrown in. You'll see some back cuts. And what's nice about the man in the back, it's like having, uh, imagine you're going against a zone. As the defense turns, that passer gets to see everything, gets to see the attacker, and puts the goalie in a really difficult spot. This is Mons with the ball. Goes back behind. Lost control of it. And it's going to go back to Connor. And the Chieftains ball will get a chance to put ball. it in play. We talked about Monis, the All-State soccer player. 15 goals, 14 assists. And according to Coach Ben, one of the two fastest kids on his team. So yes, speed matters, obviously, in just about any sport except maybe golf. And... Uh, <laughs> But uh, in this case, uh, if, you can, if you can have some, uh, a team of kids that are faster than the others, you, you've got a leg up, no pun intended. <laughs> Connor trying to add to the 2 nothing advantage. This is Hollerback behind the net for the Chieftains. This is Sir Deckney, the leading scorer, already with a goal and an assist on the afternoon. Gets it back outside to Gibbons. They play catch on the perimeter. Suarez. And now Sir Deckney. Talking Connor's about, I'm sorry, Steve. Talking about Sir Deckney. Good one-on-one -on -one skills and technique, according to Coach Matt Sersosimo. Yeah, he's obviously a good athlete. And uh, so these are the kind of things that happen in the Hall Connor games, right? Is that it's hot out there, and you can throw records and, and, and pass history out the door. The kids are obviously nervous, um, which a little bit of nervousness is never a bad thing as an athlete. But when it gets in the way of performance, that's when we struggle as coaches it's trying to get them to settle down stop uh, stop with the turnovers just play within yourself and don't try to do too much like both teams have had really unforced errors at this point um, that have cost some possession time Graham Kennedy with the pass to Blashinsky now this is Jack McHale and back outside Nolan Tibwall a sophomore transfer from Northwest Catholic out there for the Warriors right now yeah, Nolan's a great little athlete. I knew him when he was young, when he, he came through our, our camps, and uh, he just loves to play. And this is an athlete sport. Uh, this, is a, this is a sport that uh, really competitive, aggressive kids that maybe come to it late but pick it up quickly if they've got good eye-hand coordination, good fitness, and good toughness. So you'll see a lot of crossover athletes in lacrosse. And shot goes wide. The way you were just describing the lacrosse athlete, you were just talking, it was ironic, as you're describing the hockey player as well. And in Canada, this is the number two sport to, to hockey. Yeah, absolutely. Wayne Gretzky is known for saying exactly that, that he really couldn't wait sometimes f to hang up the skates and pick up the lacrosse stick. And he wasn't getting worse at hockey by playing lacrosse. He was getting better at hockey by playing lacrosse. And I, that's why a lot of these kids you'll find excel uh, in other uh, multi-sport experiences. So again, unforced errors are going to hurt both teams. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, that, that went off the long stick there, and uh, back to Connard. Those are the kind of plays when coaches go and review film, they just uh, makes their stomach get in a little bit of knots, and for the kids too when they're looking at it because they, they wish they could get those back. They tend to be just mental errors, and nobody's trying to make those mistakes, but that's what's going to separate teams from winning or losing. Ken Connard still up 2 nothing. 5.20 to go here in the opening stanza. Good year for the Hall Warriors as well. We talk about them qualifying for the tournament. They're at 6-7 and seven on the season. A nice turnaround after 4-12 and 12 a year ago. And, and Coach Ben told me he learned a lot in this being his second year as opposed to year number one last year. Well, good coaches uh, never stop learning. And Coach Vaughn is a, is a sponge. And for s just having got to know him so well, he lives for his kids. Wow, that's a nice little shot in the upper right-hand corner there. From the angle, Henry Nidal that time, the second leading scorer, and he becomes the second Connor Chieftain in the 2017 yeah, season to hit the 20-goal plateau. Yeah, good for him. Uh, you know, it's uh, interesting. I went to see the Hall uh, Connor final basketball game, and Henry went in as a senior starter. Uh, yeah, to match up against uh, cool, cool, Matt Brock, and I would guess he's nothing more than five eight five nine. And Brock, who's being recruited Division One at six 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 seven, he absolutely had shut him down for the first four or five minutes, and he was doing so well. He drew two charges, and he came out of the game because he hadn't played that long all season. I remember going up to <laughs> Coach Leghorn afterwards, and said, "Why did you take that kid out?" He goes, "He asked to come out because he, he just he wasn't used to playing that much." So. Obviously, you see his athleticism, but I was really impressed in those few f first few minutes of that basketball game with how Henry handled himself out there, and um, nice to see him get his goal right there. It's a nice shot. Steve, talk about the similarities, if you would, between the footwork. Uh, both of the coaches for this team told me that basketball and lacrosse footwork seem to go hand in hand. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I had um, co I coached girls lacrosse uh, for four years, and let me just be clear that girls lacrosse is, is – is different in the same way that rugby would be to football. It's, you know, a lot of times people think of boys and girls lacrosse as the same game. They are very different in a lot of ways, but the similarities to basketball, definitely um, the links are there. I mean, even right now, you can see the man-to-man -man defense that's being played. Mm -hmm. It's still ball, me, goal principles, right? That's sure. a nice save by the goalie there. Oh, tipped it up. And you're always trying to keep yourself between the defender. You're also trying to cut off passing lanes. You're, you have to communicate because you can screen. There's back cuts. So in terms of defensive positioning, you have to be, your head hate needs to be on a swivel at all times. You close out under control in case somebody fakes and goes by you. So very similar. So I coached for four years, quite frankly, without a stick because I couldn't teach the girls the stick skills that they hopefully had developed by the time they got to the high school level, but I could teach them positioning and uh, spacing. So, a, I'm sorry, that was a tremendous save by Horner, by the way. Great save, but once again, Hall does a good job getting a defensive stop, but they don't reward themselves by clearing the midfield on the on the Connard redefend. And it wasn't all that aggressive a redefend. Again, I would call that an unforced error more than anything else. So Hall really needs to protect the ball better if they're going to climb back in this game. That's three times, I believe, already, Steve, yeah. that they've made the transition pass into an error. Yeah, absolutely, and I think, you know, as coaches, you work on that all the time, and you put the kids out there, they know what to do, they just have to execute. You know, at the, at the, at the quarter, coach will talk about that, uh, value the lacrosse ball, take your time, make sure we get it at least over midfield so we can get into our sets. Nice catch, and the shot goes wide. It was taken by Grant O'Connor, the junior. Well, that's a deep shot from, from, from that far, far, but again, it's going through people, so you don't know if the goalie's blocked out at all, and when you take that long shot, you hope that he is, and you might get a bounce and a flick in. But then people won't be looking. Again, Connor keeping it on the perimeter. They come to the near side to John Gibbons. Back of the net to Hollerback. Good patience by Connor here. Um, they're, they're not trying to force things. Um, you can see these boys use both hands very well. They might catch on the right side, reverse on the, with the left hand. Um, you know, some of them feel more comfortable with one side than the other, but the kids who are going to play at the next level are certainly going to use both hands. It's another goal right there on a deep bounce shot by number five. Grant O'Connor getting his 14th of the season. 
He nearly missed about a half minute ago, and this time he's able to connect. You're alluding to good fundamentals, I'm sure, and, and that's one thing that head coach Matt Sersosimo talked to me about on the phone. So this is a very fundamentally sound team that he's got. Yeah, obviously you can see that they're, uh, they're very patient. Um, they're not trying to force the ball into play. They're just actually just passing perimeter. I'm not seeing anything too creative. I think that Hall's certainly going to need to put a lot more pressure on these deep shots because all the shots have come from range, not off of set plays with cutters or back screens. So it's really going to be important for, uh, uh, for the Hall kids to put more pressure on those shooters so they, they can't get their hands free. John Lagoy, the face-off specialist, now 3-1 and one on the afternoon in the circle. Aaron's shot goes wide at the 128 mark for the opening stanza. Connard enjoying a 4-0 advantage. Well, that was interesting there and in that it was a long stick that was up on attack uh, who typically would, should stay back. But because I believe he was on the draw and the way the possession went, he found himself on offense. And instead of coming back and trading with the midfielder, he went in, found himself open, unmarked, and he, and he almost got himself a goal with the long stick there. Now the play from behind the net. Holler back with the pass. He's able to find outside John Lagoy. Now back outside the John Gibbons. Again, patience on the perimeter for the road team. Yeah, you can see Hall's extending their defense a little bit more, trying to put a little more pressure. Um, oh, off the goalpost that time, Steve. Yeah, that was a. Um, he certainly got beat on that def on that defensive this is slide. Like anything involving art or uh, it looked like a crease violation of some sort from Connard. So one of the few breaks here for Hall in the opening quarter. Yeah, and again, so this is going to be just a function of seeing how patient they are once they get this. You know, if they can get one goal going into the quarter, uh, because of that violation, Hall was given the ball at midfield per the rule and, uh, you know, didn't have to deal with the redefend. But one goal heading into the quarter makes it only a three-goal game uh, at the quarter break. That can really change momentum in a lot of ways. So uh, right now, uh, that's what Hall is looking for. Graham Kennedy took the shot, and that goes wide. Because it was a shot and not a pass, it's whoever is first or closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds. So that's why Hall is going to gain possession. Had the referee deemed that to be a pass, which obviously wasn't, then it would have gone over to Connard. So with 10 seconds to go, they're going to try to get some sort of ISO and get a deep shot. I'd like to see a screen here. Oh, trying to free his hands. He's got three seconds. Not sure that he knows. And it doesn't look like they'll get a shot off. And time expires here in the opening quarter. And... One quarter in the books. Your score is countered four and Hall no score. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level. Keating Insurance, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, College Prep Express, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council. And for more information, you can go to their website at www.war-chief.net. That's war-chief.net. Steve, impressions of the opening quarter? Well, I think uh, Connor's got to feel pretty good about where they're at. I mean, you, you know, mathematically, you'd say they're on pace to win 16 nothing. That never happens in sports, obviously. But what we've got to make sure happens, um, you know, from a, uh, an opposition standpoint as a coach is figure out what led to the amount of uh, possession time, which I would imagine uh, Connor probably possessed maybe 70 percent of the time, and then the unforced turnovers. Also, there needs to be some awareness of the kids how much time's on that clock. Granted, their back was to the clock. Uh, the, the, the fellow had the ball at the end behind, but the whole team should be working hard to get a shot off there um, uh, near, near the end of that quarter. Matt Sussasimo, his first year as the uh, head coach, had a nice opportunity to talk to him on the phone last week. He played for Bill Condon, who, of course, had a quarter century at the helm of this Connor Chieftains program. And it was actually Coach Condon that reached out to Matt and asked him if he'd be interested. It's almost like he was hand-selecting him for, for the job, and what an honor for him. He was one of his first players that he had, playing in 1992 to 1996 for Coach Condon at Connor. Sure. So, you know, I got to know Bill Condon when I first moved here from Seattle, and uh, Bill was running a, I would say, an alternative program for, for kids who were at risk over at Connor High School. And as a counselor, um, he was one of those 
uh, veteran teachers that really took me under his wing. And I got to know Bill over the years through, through that experience and always valued him as an educator. Because as coaches, that's what we are. We're educators. Uh, the Sersasimo name is, is certainly one that we all know well. Um, I had the chance to become friends with Megan through our rivalry, uh, coaching girls lacrosse, and obviously Matt being the son of the another Matt. Um, everybody knows that name, and uh, he's got a great reputation. Um, obviously, as a first-year coach, to come out if he could 500, make states. Uh, that's a good first campaign um, that you you know start to build your own culture to build on what Bill had done over the years. Well said. As we can play here in the second quarter. Chieftain's trying to build on that four nothing advantage. Well, right there, I mean, in sports, we talk about having urgency. I would say Hall nor Connor had any urgency there. There was two different opportunities for both teams to gain possession, and neither really went for it like it was the hall Connor game like I would expect. It wasn't that emergency, like we have to get possession. Hall had an opportunity right there. All right, let's earn this back. Let's gain some momentum. But Connor uh, won what we call 50-50 balls. And if they're going to continue to win those 50-50 balls, Steve, it's going to be very difficult for Hall to get uh, any sustained pressure and then get back into this game for sure. Sure. As a lacrosse coach, I would always talk to the girls and say, look, they're not 50-50 balls. They're 100% balls ours. You have to go after it like our entire season depends on it. No matter what the score is, no matter what the time of the game is, you have to play with a sense of urgency because you can't win in this game if you don't possess the lacrosse ball. So uh, shouldn't be fit. Hall has to approach it much differently than they did on that possession right there. They have to be more aggressive. Grant O'Connor. Looking to make the pass, he goes one-on-one -on -one against Max Congdon. That's a live ball off the back of the net, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, it is, and I, I'm not really sure why the defender handled it the way that he did. Um, so, you know, in terms of that possession, um, again, we think Hall got a little bit lucky in terms of being able to gain it. And here's Andrew Crevetti with the ball for the Warriors as he tries to lead the attack. Another Aaron pass, and it's picked off by the Chieftains. Pass was intended for Barrett Canega, and it was picked off by Cole Johnson. And Johnson comes away with it, leading Connor on the rush. Yeah, I don't want to overstate it. Uh, you know, Crivetti uh, did a nice job of picking up the, uh, the missed bounce, but just a little too uh, quick to get rid of it there and uh, led the pass into a dangerous spot. It was a fumble, and... Again, Connor possesses. They, you know, they, they don't have to be in any hurry. They can run two, three minutes off at a time if they want because there's no shot clock. And um, referees, unlike the college game, from my understanding, do not have to uh, call, call a stall, uh, which at the college level, they, the, the referees can uh, give a, uh, a time in which they, a shot needs to get off. So Connor could literally possess the ball the rest of the game and still win. And they score again. Beautiful shot by Grant O'Connor, getting his second of the afternoon. Yeah, you know, again, it goes back to the uh, to the missed opportunity of possession. While that goal was scored, Hall probably should still be running offense. It probably happened within 35 seconds of the turnover, and you can't win if you turn the ball over at the rate that Hall is doing it. You know what I found interesting here? Even after a goal, even with a 5 nothing advantage, there's Coach Sersosimo getting three players together barking out the instructions, still teaching, always coaching, all the time. Look, this I'm telling you, this is a game of runs. And um, if Hall can get a, get a quick one, um, then, you know, th then the momentum can absolutely change. It's a great effort by the Hall player there. Um, but unfortunately for Hall, uh, the effort goes unwarranted and becomes Connard's ball once again. Uh, a really good chance off the faceoff there. But... Uh, I don't know if the sun's a factor, the heat's a factor, um, but the, the unforced turnovers are, are really proving costly. 92 degrees, our game time temperature today. A bit of July or August in mid-May here. And that could certainly, I would think, affect the endurance and the stamina, Steve, of these kids out here today. Yeah, absolutely. You'll see a lot more subbing in the boys' game than the girls' game. You know, part of it, right, to start with, you're wearing padding, you're wearing a helmet, and it's a, uh, it's a more aggressive game. And another score, this time by the senior, John Gibbons. Gets his 13th of the season. And minus the extra point for Matt Sosimo's team, they're up 6-0. 
Yes, sir, and you talked about uh, continuing to coach. Um, Matt's biggest concern right now would be men mental letdown, that sometimes what happens, as you've seen a lot of sports, um, is people become complacent with too early a lead. So what I would always do as a coach is I might you take the opportunity of the next break is to psychologically get the kids to play as if the score were reversed. So when they come in, I would say, I do not want you looking at the scoreboard unless you're looking at the score as if they have the goals that we have and play like that. And that creates this urgency and keeps your focus while you're going. And I'm sure Coach Sassimo is uh, talking the same thing as these kids come out. Don't let up, don't take your pedal off, where Coach Vaughn, Coach Von Meyerhauser, is likely trying to do the same thing with his kids. Let's get, just get one. Once we get one, we can build on that momentum. 7.55, time remaining here in the opening half. Countered up by a half dozen and looking to add to it. Yeah, well in football, a lot of times you worry about time of possession as a, as a defensive coach if the other team has the ball a lot because on hot days, when the defense is out there all the time, they're going to get tired. So every one of these goals makes it harder and harder for this defense. It's a nice save right there. Terrific save. Yeah. Looked like he got it with a knee pad. Alan Horner. And we talked about the yeah. fact his 48% save percentage coming into this one. And uh, you can't fault him on a lot of the goals here this afternoon. And he's made three good saves in particular. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think uh, the defense got to put a little more pressure. Number 22, who we talked about before, just made a nice hustle play to earn, really literally earn the possession there for Hall. Um, I couldn't see it because I was blocked out by the bench. Uh, it looked like it might have gone off of him on the effort, but it was almost as if the referees were saying, that dive, that kid deserves that ball, and the Hall, Hall has a possession at, at this point. For sure, and you're talking about Andrew Crivetti, of course, senior captain, defensive leader. Also somebody who had 30 catches for Frank Robinson's football team during the season. Yeah, again, a lot of crossover athletes here. Uh, I don't know the young man well enough, but my, a lot of times defenders may have come to lacrosse late. They, they, they don't mind picking up the long stick and uh, learning from, uh, from coaches on, on how to play this game. Uh, your stick handle doesn't have to be quite as good with the long stick, and so sometimes kids who, who haven't um, been playing their whole lives or don't really care about scoring and passing so much, they're happy enough just to go down and play defense. So uh, Crivetti strikes me as that kind of kid. Talk about the players crossing over, Steve. We also had uh, coaches crossing over. We talked about Coach Vaughn, a longtime assistant for Frank Robinson on the football team. He got Coach Rob to, to come over and be the freshman coach for the lacrosse team this year. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, you look, if you're going to be a, um, uh, it's a, it's a good effort by number 11, but again, I think if the, the difference there is that that's straight on for the goalie. He had a line of sight. Uh, if that had been a bounce, maybe greater likelihood. And they uh, score at the other end. Yeah. So transition defense right there, that's, that's one of the most dangerous spots in lacrosse, right? Again, I think sometimes what happens is fellows come down with the long stick. You think, all right, he's going to dump it off. Uh, no one stopped the ball, which is key in any invasion game, whether it's basketball or soccer. You have to stop the ball. Nobody stopped that ball. It allowed him to go in pretty much undefended right on goal and uh, made a good sh shot with the long stick there. And in lacrosse, like you see in hockey a lot of times, you have the goaltender make the big save at one end. This time it was Henderson making the stop. And then in transition, Stabnik went all the way down and scored the goal for Connard, and they're upping their lead to 7 nothing. Yeah, I, I, again, I... Part of what I'm looking at right now on the Hall side too is body language, is that you know, what can happen is it can get out of hand in a hurry if leaders don't step up and say, look, we just need one goal. Let's just get one, then we'll get the next possession. And the last thing you want to have happen is if you start to get frustrated, things, kids get chippy and then you get penalties and the next thing you know you could be playing down a man. Certainly don't want that to happen. Violation, I believe was assessed against the Warriors, so off the turnover. Connor gets it back, and an errant pass intended for John Gibbons goes awry, and now Hall will take over with 5.42 to play here in the opening half. Yeah. Pete, you were making a point about crossover coaches. I want you to go back th to that for a second because I, we got sure. cut off with the goal there. With Frank Robinson, I, I was saying I thought it was really interesting that uh, Coach Vaughn, for so many years as an assistant to uh, Frank 
football-wise, and he was able to get Frank to come over and be the freshman coach for the boys lacrosse team this year. Yeah, certainly, you know, you, um, Coach Robinson is somebody that, he, that I absolutely admire and adore and works with me a lot during our summer programs and is just a great guy to have um, mentoring the young kids. Um, I used to talk to Coach Robinson when I would coach freshman teams just about how important it was when you're trying to build the culture of a program, that that first experience at the high school can be so important. And I know that part of Coach Vaughn's philosophy is he wants athletes before he wants just lacrosse players. Because a lot of times kids might get exposed to lacrosse. doesn't mean they're necessarily competitors or you know, kids who are going to help the program just because they've been playing for a while. So his feeling is that if you can get Coach Robinson, who's a great physical educator, who gets all the kids to come out for football, if he can get them to come out for lacrosse, even if it's just for one year, get them fall in love with the game, that you're going to get some of those kids who rise up and can help the program down the road, maybe as soon as next year. The other interesting aspect about this program, the lacrosse program at Hall, is that Coach Vaughn had only six kids initially come out for the freshman team, and all of a sudden he's been a master recruiter both of the seasons that he's been the head coach as the shot has bounced high and wide. And all of a sudden he turned that number of six into 20, Steve. And, and speak about how that can really change things at the varsity level if you can get so many good numbers in terms of volume at the freshman level and build a program up from the grassroots that way. Sure, so you might know that, that Coach Vaughn is a, is a TA, a paraprofessional, uh, working with special needs kids at Hall. Um, when he had um, transitioned into coaching, um, he really wanted to be working daily at the school where he would coach. So he knew that if he could get a job in the school, a lot of times the, the coaching happens in those experiences that are outside of the field, that happen during the day. Unfortunately, yet another unforced error there by, by Hall and a, and a midfield turnover. So and they're going to have to figure this out uh, sooner than later. So, but Coach Vaughn is, is a magnet for kids. He, those who know him just know how personable, how likable he is. And when he tells you, I believe in you, I want you on my team, kids want to do that. Um, and so, you know, but there's a blessing and a curse with that. Uh, Hall and Connor, boys and girls lacrosse. Uh, for the past decade or, year or so has been a no-cut sport. And so what happens is sometimes is um, when kids come out and you... Uh, oh, big, not, big save by Horner. Excuse me. Yeah, no, big, that's, a, that's a huge save because obviously this could be that momentum shift we're looking for and we can see if they can get the transition that maybe they're looking for. But what happens is if you get 80 kids out for your program and 14 of them are freshmen and, that, and maybe only two leave the program, you sometimes can wind up with 12 seniors that you want to give a spot on a varsity. So you have to be really clear, and I've run into this over the years, you don't want to cut kids, but you want to make their role very clear. So the last thing you want is a kid that's at the end of your bench who says, well, I deserve to play because I'm a senior. That's not the case, but you've got to find a role for them. And Coach Vaughn and I talk about that a lot. And so it can be blessing and curse, but he's trying to build a culture in this program. And you do that by being clear with expectations for the kids and for the parents, and having a veteran coach like Coach Robinson on your staff will make that easier as he builds this program out. Well said. 2.10 to go, opening half. And Hall finally on the board, they score. And there's Theo Blashinsky getting his 32nd of the season. Yeah, you saw how creative Theo was there. He went as if he was going to circle the crease. He had it in, in a strong right hand as if he was going to come around the backside. I think the goalie took his eye off seeing if there were cutters. And as soon as he saw the goalie's head turn, he sneaked it in with his left hand. It was a crafty play right there. Yeah, it really was nice. Jack McHale, who's one of the best playmakers for Coach Vaughn's team, gets his 12th assist of the season on that goal to make it 7-1, to one, which is outside of two minutes to play here in the opening half. In hockey parlance, we would say beating the goaltender on the short side that time between his body and the goalpost. That's, that's right. That was, a, a, again, a crafty goal, but unfortunately uh, there was a false start by Hall. So their chance to immediately gain momentum uh, was thwarted um, just on a little bit of anxiousness there to, to try to gain that face off. So the uh, referee called, uh, called the false start. Steve, uh, could part of the strategy for Matt Sersosmo here be to perhaps, with a minute and 40 to go, just hold for the last shot, be content to have a 7-1 advantage? Absolutely. Uh, you know, certainly you can see that Hall is being forced to extend their defense right now. And as the defense gets extended, 
you're going to force a lot of draw and dump situations. So if you can beat the one man, which is a lot easier to do because you're going forward, the defender's playing backwards. Once you beat that person, you draw another defender, and then you can make a decision. Do I have a, like I would say to my girls, is it a slam dunk? If it's not a slam dunk when we have a 7-1 lead, we do not shoot it. That's a slam dunk. It's yeah. a one-on-one -on -one play. He's got it on a strong hand. Defender's not close enough to get into his hands. Slam dunk. It's, go, it's fine for Connor to go ahead and take that shot, obviously. Gabe Suarez on the scoreboard again here this afternoon. And to have that angle that he did from about 15 feet out in front, that is almost definition of the slam dunk, I would think. Yeah, you know, you, people can say, well, he was defended, but he was defended just because there's a player on. It's really in lacrosse you're trying to take hands away. And so if you're allowing a strong right-handed shooter to be able to swing with that pace with their hands free, they're going to be able to pick their spot. And, and the goalie's literally defenseless at that point because of the, because of the distance and, and, and how open they are. And they come back and score again. Yeah. Right off the face-off win. And this was Derek O'Connor able to beat the goaltender. And it's 9-1 to one with 62 seconds to go here in the opening half. And we talked about the greatness in the face-off circle of John Lagoy for Connor here this afternoon. He's won at least six of the face-offs. Yeah, and again, that's making a big difference. And unfortunately for Hall, Connor's leadership there did the right thing, right? They, 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 get, they let up the one goal. Maybe they were hoping for a shutout. But instead of pouting about that and letting Hall back in it, they answered with two really quick goals, which then takes a lot of sort of any juice Hall was developing uh, out from underneath him. So you can see there's restraining lines there. So, you know, you'd think the, why aren't kids going in? On the, on the uh, until there's a possession, uh, until there's a possession on the draw, on the, on the faceoff, mm -hmm. they can't cross that line or else they'd be offsides. Oh, okay. All right, okay. you can see on this field, it's red, white, and blue. The restraining line works on, on both the boys and girls games somewhat similarly, and I'll, I'll explain the differences in a bit. Interestingly enough, Coach Osasimo, it looks like, was the one who called that timeout there. Because to your point, he might be saying, you know what, we got 48.5. Uh, let's let's get it to uh, just with the last shots, and don't go in unless there's under 10 seconds. Nine to one the score, and a reminder: this is just the first of our double header here today on Channel Five. We'll have the girls' contest coming up, and that should be an interesting one as well, as uh, they'll begin that shortly after six o'clock tonight. The Cotter girls right now currently third in Class L, just two losses on the campaign, while the Hall girls eight victories on the season after winning just three a season ago. So uh, both teams in uh, fine form. Yeah, certainly I, I think both teams have to be happy with where they are given where they were at last year. Um, Hall's lost a number of close games. Uh, their record could actually be uh, probably uh, at 11 or 12 wins despite um, one or uh, I think another maybe four one goal games. Uh, Connard's reputation around the uh, state has been uh, it's been fun to listen to um, my old coaching friends just about how much Connard's improved um, and I'm really happy for coach Sasamo and the success she's having she's a wonderful person and a great coach. She really is and plus 100 in the goal differential this year. They've scored in double digits Steve in every single contest. Yeah, they, uh, they've got some serious weapons um, on the offensive side, which is going to make it a challenge for, um, for the Hall girls tonight. But again, hall Connor games, um, you don't always go on records. I mean, certainly if you look at the hall Connor records right now, you would not have expected uh, a, uh, an eight-goal lead. Yeah, for sure. We looked at uh, common opponents. We looked at the records and... Thought it would be a very, very competitive game here today. And for whatever reason, a big first half for the Chieftains. And they have an eight-goal advantage as Coach C calls another timeout with 26 and 9 tenths seconds to go until halftime. I believe that um, in the boys' game, it's use them or lose them timeouts, two per half. And so uh, what, what Coach decided to do there is, look, I haven't used yet one. And quite frankly, the reason he didn't use them earlier is because Hall's been really tired. And... Um, you know, why give a timeout, allow for the Hall defenders to rest, and, and you have to have possession in order to call timeouts. So I'm assuming that Coach Vaughn's theory on this was, look, we have possession, now. I'm not going to call a timeout and gain momentum. Boys got to figure it out. So Coach Sosimo saying probably once again, let's settle down. 
Let's run whatever our set is. Let's get one shot with less than, probably less than 15 seconds is safe enough because it gives them a chance for a rebound or if it goes out of bounds, they get possession, maybe could get one more. So it'll be interesting to see if he's drawn something up in particular as a last second situation. And again, just under a half a minute of time to play with as they try to add to what is already an eight goal advantage here in the opening half. Feel bad for these poor Hall defenders because they have had to play a lot of minutes in this heat. Um, and, you know, they've, they've sort of done it to themselves in terms of the turnovers, but at the same time, um, it's this cycle. I'm not sure that's what coach was looking for, um, but as you see, uh, his shot there, he knew if he did miss it, he was likely going to be able to just go back to his, uh, his man behind the cage. So they've got about 12 seconds left to see if they can get one more shot off. And here's Grant O'Connor as uh, he's being bothered on the perimeter. Tries to move his way towards the cage, and we see a flag down on the play. Andrew Crivetti was stride for stride with him defensively. He also had some help from Todd Crivetti as well. And the thing for Hall here, Steve, is that I know they're kids and they're resilient, but they have to come back and play tomorrow afternoon against Haddam Killingworth to wrap up the season. Yeah, likely that would be, uh, we had a, our first penalty of the game when you saw the flag go up. Uh, again, I think that's a frustration play as much as anything else. Connor's deciding just, you know what, it's 9-1. We don't need to force anything else. Uh, we'll just call it a half. Yeah, to have to bounce back tomorrow, um, it's going to be a challenge. Um, Adam Killingworth traditionally has a decent program, and, uh, you know, Hall's got to figure out this half before they start thinking about that one, though. Yeah, definitely so. First things first, as it were. So we're at halftime here at Chalmers Stadium as the War Chief Sports Council in association with Channel 5 continue to present West Hartford High School Sports and your score at the break, Connor 9 and Hall 1. We're going to step aside. Steve Boyle and I come back with second half action right after this on WHC-TV Channel 5 and online at whctv.org.
And welcome back, everybody, to Chalmers Stadium, the War Chief Sports Council and Channel 5 presenting West Hartford High School Sports. 
halftime winding down of our first of two in the lacrosse battles today and it's been all connored they lead hall by the count of nine to one pete lamoureux along with steve boyle and steve we talked a lot about different athletes and crossover sports and i know that's a, a concept near and dear to you talk about your association with 241 sports if you would Sure. Thanks, Pete. I mean, I, it's one of the joys of uh, coming and doing these games is getting to see kids. You know, you, you, you called out uh, Jack McHale's name. I knew Jack when he went to kindergarten with my youngest daughter and grew up on the street. And just hearing kids' names like that and seeing them perform at this level, w having watched them play in the backyard. So 241 Sports, I think, as you know, uh, our tagline's life's too short for just one sport. That's where the 241 comes from. And... Uh, it's been an absolutely humbling experience to be able to go around the country at this point and talk about sports sampling and the value of it and speak at the national level around physical literacy and why kids going back to play and sports sampling is really important. Absolutely. Talk about some of your experiences. You've been all over the country. You're out west. Uh, you were down in the D.C. area. Got to meet uh, the former first lady, Mrs. Obama. Had to be quite a thrill there. Yeah, I mean, that's, again, it's, it's so humbling. When I first got asked to go down to D.C., I felt like uh, Jimmy Stewart and Mr. Smith goes to Washington. And, and, <laughs> and, you know, I wonder how I got here. But I got here because folks in West Hartford uh, listened and they believed in the philosophy. At first, it was a little bit of the emperor's new clothes where parents were afraid because folks were saying, look, if you, if you want your kid to play in high school or in college, they need to play one sport year round. And I always knew intrinsically and just from personal experience, both as athlete and coach, that was so far from the truth. And I asked people, you know, how many kids do you know that have gone pro from Hall High School in any sport? And nobody can name anybody. Mm. But yet how many athletes have come through this school but I can tell you the kids that go on to play Division One, 90% of them are kids that were multi-sport athletes. I've had a chance to coach a lot of them myself, but most college coaches and all, you know, right now I get a chance to talk with folks at the USOC, the U.S. Olympic Committee, yeah. and they have national governing bodies, and then they have multi-sport organizations like Boys and Girls Clubs and uh, YMCAs, which are some organizations we work with. And there, everyone's coming out now with policy statements for youth sports to say kids should not be specializing before age 12. There are exceptions where, for, depending on the sport, like gymnastics, where maybe it's appropriate because of the age at which kids start to perform at a high level. But those are exceptions, and we can't sure. use those as the rule. The other thing is I've li been listening. Uh, we've had a guy named John O'Sullivan who started changing the game project on our advisory board and he was interviewing David Epstein, who wrote The Sports Gene. Sure. And they were just talking about the fact that, you know, kids that are going to be successful in life, it's going to be because of youth sport experience. And that we can't be cutting kids out of that experience because they're not performing that great uh, at age eight. So I look, the game has just started already, and I didn't even notice. We got talking so much, and, and Connor has already made the score 10 to 1. After a 9 1 advantage that they had at halftime. Uh, to further elaborate, how can people learn more about 241 Sports, Dick? Well, certainly our website is 241sports.com. I'm trying to be as active as possible on Twitter, Steve at, 24, um, yeah, Steve at 241 Sports, and all our handles are at 241 Sports. Very good. Best of luck. Continued success with that. Thank you. I had a chance to talk with Jason Siegel, the uh, athletic director for both Hall and Connor, uh, between the break. He did say that the referees and the coaches agreed to an extended break there. Uh, normal halftime uh, would have been two minutes shorter, and they are extending the time between the quarters to give kids a water break. There's a much-needed a much needed uh, face-off for, uh, for Hall, but they immediately give it away in another unforced error. Sir Deckney had the uh, goal for the Connor Chieftains, so a multiple goal effort for him as well as... Uh, he is now up to 23 goals in the 2017 season, leading the attack for Matt Sousasimo's counter chieftains. 10-1 the score, just underway. Third quarter action here at Chalmers Stadium. Glad you've joined us on this hot afternoon, whether you're watching on Channel 5 or online at whctv.org. Th that goal is a tough one for Hall to handle because, you know, you hope you get a impassioned uh, speech at halftime and kids come out ready to uh, see if they can start to chip away maybe you get it to five by the quarter and you, and you think you got a chance but that immediate goal within seconds of the uh, 
of the of the face off may, m makes it a challenge in terms of just body language and energy for the Hall kids who have been playing a lot of defense this game already. Yeah, and we make the analogy we, we say in, in hockey all the time as they score again, those goals, Steve, in the first minute and the last minute are always backbreakers defensively and, and big boosters offensively as Connor makes it 11 1. Yes, can make all the difference. And, uh, you know, as a coach, sometimes in these situations, you just. The biggest enemy right now is the clock, right? You you, sure. you, you hope sometimes you can do some things to uh, um, to allow it to uh, expedite if, if you can't get to a point of being able to get yourself back in the game. In the girls' game, the clock would actually be running right now. They have a kind of a mercy rule that if it gets to 10 goals, the, the, the clock will continue to run. Um, it, for the boys, it, it, that'll happen at, at a 12-goal differential. Um, Probably because, based on research, there's a more there's a greater likelihood to be able to come back uh, because of the quick and higher scoring that happens in the boys' game. Sure. John Gibbons had the last goal for the Chieftains, assisted by Grant O'Connor, and it is as Steve talked about a double-digit advantage for the road team. Connor has defeated Hall every year since 2011. May 25th, 2011 was the last time the Warriors able to beat. The Connor Chieftains in lacrosse, and there's something similar on the girls' side the last couple of years, but not as uh, prolonged. Certainly during the end of your tenure, you were able to get some wins against the Crosstown rival. Yeah, but quite frankly, I mean, you know, as coaches, uh, we're often only as good as our players, and I was blessed with a lot of good players. Uh, I certainly would not deem myself to be a better women's lacrosse coach than Meg Sersosimo who played it in college and coached it at the collegiate level and, and lives the sport uh, in ways I can't even imagine. So um, I, had, uh, I had incredible talent and as a result was able to uh, eke out wins um, in all the times that we played each other. Um, but she has, uh, she's had that advantage over another wonderful coach in Meg Chaplin over the past few years. Meg, of course, worked in tandem with yourself. Meg yes, so I... So Meg, I had, uh, was one of those friends who had coached with my wife in the youth league and who I'd gotten to know, and her, her daughter was a standout player as a, when I took over the program. And um, I begged Meg to be my assistant, but the person who ultimately made the decision was her daughter, who, oh. who finally gave her blessing, and uh, I think it's changed Hall uh, lacrosse history as a result. Tremendous save as Horner stays in the game for Hall. It's funny how kids have that influence sometimes, huh? Or well, a lot of times. I remember telling my daughter, who was freshman at Hall, that I had put my name in for the job, and she laughed at me uh, uh, as if, you know, and, and in all honesty, she, she probably deserved to because I had the only year I had ever coached girls lacrosse was the year before at the fifth and sixth grade level with my wife. I just knew it was so similar, though, to the other sports. And I've always felt you don't coach a sport, you coach kids. Mm -hmm. So what I love of, about taking over a program is building a culture, building a team, getting kids to believe in something beyond what they might have thought they could do otherwise. And I was blessed to have some really good players in that particular program where I could build something special. Now you're too modest because mm -hmm. I've heard nothing but great things about you. Well, ser seriously though, yeah. Pete, I mean, I, you know, I, I was probably 12 to 15 deep with kids I could put in a game and I didn't worry about unforced errors and turnovers and what have you. So right here, speaking of unforced errors and turnovers, this might be the, one of the longest possessions we've seen Hall have in a long time. So, you know, what they need to do is really give their... All right, so they're going to gain possession, so they yep. get to keep running the clock. What they're doing right now, more than anything perhaps, is they're giving their defense a little bit of a rest. These poor kids have been out there on the defensive side trying their best because the offense hasn't run enough clock to let them, let them catch their breath in this heat. Here's Manus trying to work his magic from behind the net. And that's a great point. You, you talk about the heat, Steve. It's got to be, we talked about 92 degrees as our game time temperature. Probably another 10 or 15 degrees warmer down on the field right now. Yeah, again, Coach Siegel said they talked about it as a crew. You talk about it with your training staff. It'll obviously be a little bit cooler for the girls' game as the sun goes down. But uh, they had some cloud cover when they were making the decision. So um, coaches agreed, no, it's fine. Um, athletic trainers are ultimately going to make that decision. It's a good little effort there. Um, by Jack McHale. Yeah. Your neighbor. My, uh, he's, he's recently moved, oh, but okay. uh, he's, uh, neighbor, yes, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah, great family and um, a lot of good people on, on both, 
both of these kids. A lot of kids have come through our camp from both sides uh, on, on these teams. Uh, some Plissio boys, the Gibbons from Connard. Nice, nice move by Nolan Tibble that time for the goal. Mm. Yeah. And you know, like, you know, Tibble scores a nice goal there, gets a little little something something afterwards and comes up and uh, kind of energized. What he was a little annoyed with the with the extra hit at the end. And that's the kind of thing that maybe gives the gives the Hall kid some energy and says, you know, let's go, let's go. He's a young young transfer athlete, mm -hmm. gets a nice goal, gets up with a little moxie. Maybe uh, maybe that'll put some energy into the Hall kids at this point. And another multi sport athlete as well. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, eight I, uh, catches, Steve, for 89 yards and a touchdown against Southington this fall. Even as a little kid, he was just one of those boys that liked to play. And you could tell he, it didn't matter what sport he was going to do, he was going to be good at it. And uh, I like to see him get that goal out there. Um, coaches I've known uh, that have had him uh, just say he's just a fun teammate, uh, always in good spirit and good energy. And uh, nice to see him get a goal for Hall there. And, you know, uh, maybe, uh, again, uh, six minutes to go. Um, if you can get three, and then all of a sudden you go in and say, you know what, it's not the craziest thing in the world to think we couldn't climb back in this. But you've got to get back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back goals in order for that to happen. You can't trade at this point. Down by nine still. On the attack, Derek O'Connor, the handoff. Serdekny in front, beautiful pass, and the shot goes just wide. A great setup from Serdekny to Gabe Suarez was looking to finish off the hat trick from in close and it just went wide. And there's the basketball defense again, right? So uh, <coughs> poor communication on the, uh, on the screen. Uh, both players went, went with the screener. Uh, defender came off, somebody slipped back door because there was a slide defensively and the next thing you know that young man was wide open and just missed a, a one he'd like to get back there. Max Condon had taken it down the field for Hall and now Chris Monis. All state soccer player as well as a uh, good lacrosse player and gets it back outside to Blashinsky. Theo had the first half marker for the Warriors. Back to the net. You can see the Connor kids even are being way more aggressive uh, uh, on ball with the defenders. You can tell they're paying a lot of attention to Blashinsky. Um, you know, probably that was certainly in their scout and their game plan. They'll, a lot of times what you do is you say, look, we'll help him recover off of some folks, but we do not want him to get the ball. If he does, he's what we call a live player. Uh, flag just went up. It'll be interesting to see. It's obviously going to be against Connor because they haven't stopped play. So, uh, Long again. shot. A good save that time by Ramsey Henderson. Yeah. Probably too deep without a bounce shot. It's going to be pretty easy for the goalie to zero in on that. I, 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 to me, that looks like a tired shot just, you know, and, and with given the heat. Um, you want as an athlete like Theo is to try to get back in it as quickly as possible. The other thing he probably knew is, look, we've got the, he knew, he saw the flag, knew that even if he misses or it gets saved, he's gonna regain possession. So he, he makes a decision there probably because of time and score and situation. So it's probably not all that bad a shot because if he gets the goal, you're still gonna get the flag. So now we're gonna play man up. And what you want to do is make sure you don't miss this opportunity because it'll be the first time all game if Hall can score that they'll have back-to-back -back unanswered goals. And again, it's a one-minute power play advantage for the Hall Warriors as they continue to pass on the perimeter. That pass eluded Blashinsky goes back and gets it. You talked about having the scouting report for him and to try to stop him. Great save that time by Henderson. Is there an equivalent in lacrosse defensively to like a double team in basketball? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so let me just speak about what happened there yeah. uh, be before we go there, Pete. You know, again, you, you'd see that probably 80% uh, of the counter goals have been bounce shots mm -hmm. because it's a real challenge. I think the saves that the goalie's getting here, they've been straight on. It's, it's really like playing catch. Now you throw me a hard, really hard pass, but I can catch hard passes, fast passes. If it, you're bouncing them at me, they're going to be hard to handle. So you want to treat it like that. If you notice, Connor was playing a zone because when you're man down, you can't cover everybody. Right. So they did a nice job of keeping Hall in front of them and forcing uh, that errant shot. So in terms of basketball double teams, so you know, right now if you look out, we've got um, uh, you know they're 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 pl they're playing even. And so what you can do in situations if you're trying to catch up, it's a little early for it, 
is you go for your double teams and you use the, the goalie as that extra sort of defender. Oh, okay. So, you you know, because, the, again, I think Hall is, wants to get a lot of passes back because the goalie right there made a nice little, uh, picked up a nice errant um, shot or pass and then get, just gave it right back. So now his kids have to play more defense, unfortunately. So if you were to go ahead and double the team, double ball, double team the ball, mm -hmm. then you cover the adjacents and the goalie can play the last person. And so they become sort of an extra defender in your cycle. But at some point that becomes exhausting. Sure. Um, but right now if we were to double team, people need to slide and rotate and cover that adjacent pass. Put some pressure on them, force what just happened there, uh, un uh, you know, force that error. Horner's transition pass goes to Congdon. And another pass downfield that goes awry. That was intended for Barrett Kanega that time. Pass from Jack Murphy, the sophomore defenseman. We do have a flag on the play. Uh, I don't know if it was an offside situation. Sometimes that can happen in transition. Um, trying to see, it appears they're gonna be giving Hall the ball despite the fact that um, we had another run and I say we, and I apologize, having spent 20 years at Hall, it's just force of habit. Understandable. Uh, I hope that I'm coming across as objective as possible, and I know that sometimes that's, di that's difficult. So f apologies to my, f my friends at Conard if I say we, and um, uh, I, you know, I, I, I do re obviously respect both schools so much and the coaches so much, but in this case, it's gone to Hall, um, and uh, it looks like it probably was some sort of offsides. Oh, I, I've just been informed it was a cross check that I did not, uh, we did not see up here, and that was an automatic turnover uh, back to Hall. With 2.10 to go here in the third, as Steve talked about before, the Warriors going for their first back to back goals of this game. They're down nine. And the shot goes deflected wide. It's actually picked off, and back on the attack come the Chieftains. Head manning pass goes to Sir Deckney. Man down for the Hall Warriors, writhing in pain at the 26-yard line. And that's Evan Duzan, their senior captain and defenseman. He I lunged that time, Steve, towards Sir Deckney, and uh, I think he took an errant stick, perhaps. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I was looking away to see uh, transition, so I didn't see exactly what happened. But you hate to see a senior on senior day go, go down uh, with any sort of injury. Um, not having seen exactly what happened, I can't speak to whether or not it was something that was, uh, I did look quickly and saw that the referee had sight of whatever happened and how it happened. It didn't appear to be a penalty of any sort or any sort of foul play, so to speak. No. So uh, this is good news. Uh, Evan's up on his feet. Looks like he might have just gotten the wind knocked out of him and uh, hopefully he'll get back in the game soon enough if, after they check him out for uh, any injury, concussion, things like that. 143 to play here in the third with the clock stopped and countered in front by the count of 11 to 2. Chieftains led 4 0 at the end of one. They outscored Hall 5 1 in the second. They had a 9 1 halftime advantage. They've outscored the home team 2 1 here in the third for their present lead of 11 2. To two. The War Chief Sports Council like to thank their many fine sponsors, including those at the captain's level, including Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, Coastal Tool and Rob Ludkin, and the Connard and Hall PTO. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council. For more information, go to their website at war-chief.net. War-chief.net as play is back underway. Yeah, it looks like the trainer checked out Evan and um, he's not spending any more time with him. You know, in today's world, especially if the trainer doesn't see it, you want to make sure that there was no contact to the head and uh, do quick concussion check as much as anything. Um, and obviously, you know, when you get a kid out of the game who's been in most of it, you also want to check for any heat symptoms as well. But that will look like, um, you know, the way Evan came off, he should be good to go. Uh, Connor's in no hurry with a minute uh, eight to go, as we saw with the lead in the first half. They're really extending the defense, um, creating these isolations. Now you have to draw a defender, a um, little, tr little touch pass that just didn't quite get to the target. But that's what they're trying to do, draw the defense out because they know they need to with the lead and just dump it into somebody who could be wide open underneath. Hall on the counter. This is Congdon with the ball. Gets it ahead to Tibble. He has a goal in this third quarter. And he throws it back to Theo Blashinsky. So
So it looks like Hall is doing their own version of wanting to just get the last shot off, uh, get s set something up good, give their defense some extended rest going into that last period. It's probably got to be on Coach Vaughn's um, mind that he has a game tomorrow night as well. So you're going to make some decisions about resting your defense at this point. Mm. Normally you try not to think ahead, but down 11-2 on a hot day when you just don't seem to have it, you probably are going to make some decisions about your next day um, through your personnel choices and your and your game style choices. You, you, you never want to give up on a Hall Connor game, but down 11-2, knowing he's got states ahead of him, you don't want injuries, and you certainly want to be ready to win tomorrow to help your seating in state. Modest there being bothered by LaFonte, and you hear the buzzer shouting, ending the third quarter. So again, Connor outscores all 2-1 here in the third, and they increase their advantage at the end of three, the Chieftains 11, and the Warriors 2, as you continue to watch West Hartford High School Sports here on WHC-TV Channel 5 and online at whctv.org as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. And the council would like to thank its sponsors at the varsity level, including Low Tide Photography, Blue Plate, Dave Newman Photography, Fast Eddie, West Hartford Youth Basketball, West Hartford Travel Boys Basketball, Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, Edward Connors Insurance, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Berry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, and West Hartford Girls Lacrosse. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council. Pete Lamero along with Steve Boyle and our fine Channel 5 crew. Is Jen back on the dials back at the studio today? Meredith and Diana by our sides here today doing their usual stellar job, braving the 92-degree heat that uh, has affected not only the players, but the broadcasters, the fans, everybody involved. But, uh, Steve, what a celebration of the sport of lacrosse when you can get these four teams together for a doubleheader like this. Nice crowd on hand today. Just speaks volumes to the growth of the sport and the great support in the West Hartford community. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, the this, this stats for a long time have been that lacrosse has been the fastest growing sport in the United States. And uh, there's good reason for it. Um, when lacrosse has played well, there's really... Uh, you know, I know they call soccer the beautiful game, but I have always thought lacrosse is the athlete's game. Uh, it's really a, f uh, it's a great competitive uh, sport where there's not, there's not a lot of nuance, right? You know, mm. in a sport like basketball, there's, it's, it's more nuanced than this. For me, 50-50 ball, who wants it, go get it. Um, you, there's not a ton of things you have to do in terms of crossover dribbles and behind the back and spin dribbles and out-of-bounds plays and transition fast breaks and defense you know there's there are those things but this is more raw it's more it's more uh, authentic if you will um, and as most folks know it was actually it's America's sport it was invented by the Native Americans it is a great sport mm -hmm. and a good afternoon for Connard playing it as they lead by the count of 11 to 2 Hall the first possession here in the fourth and final frame mm -hmm. Nolan Tibble with the ball along with Jack McHale as they play catch on the perimeter looking to set things up for the Warriors. You know, obviously we weren't in either of the coaches' timeouts, but I have to imagine that uh, the Hall coach said 0-0. Zero, zero. Coach Von Meyerhauser said, look, let's not try to win this game. Let's try to win this quarter. And if you can reset yourself from a mindset standpoint, it really gives you an opportunity to... Uh, uh, you know, get something good out of what was otherwise a bad experience. Here comes Connard on the attack off the turnover. Lagoy had started the rush. Henry Nidal chases it down, and he is driven down hard by Max Congdon behind the net. Max looks up in disbelief when he sees the flag down. Yeah, and this is what can happen when you're down and you're tired and you're playing your crosstown rival is you get you get frustrated and you make mental errors as, as a result of that. And, uh, you know, it is a sport that sometimes culturally aggression, you think, is part of what you're trying to do. But your aggression has to be controlled, has to be smart. You have to make good choices. And, uh, you know, Max will look at that film and recognize, yes, indeed, that was a cross check in the back. And uh, that's a penalty. And it's going to cost his team uh, to play man down for a while. Talk about all in the family, if you would. Max's sister, Tori, we'll see her. And she is called, by the way, Tori, as we preview the uh, the girls' game. 
the best freshman that Hall has had since your daughter Alana was on the team. That's what Meg Chaplin said. Well, that's uh, that's very generous uh, of Meg, and 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 certainly. Uh, Congdon, Congdon family are great. Uh, the youngest daughter, Abby, for whom the famous Abby Dabby ice cream is, is, is now named, has been a longtime camper of ours as well and uh, uh, good multi-sport family. And um, so it's, it, it, it'll, be it'll be fun to watch uh, Tory play in, the, in that game. So at this point, Connor took advantage of that man down situation and were able to add another tally to put it to 10. And Gabe Suarez, the beneficiary that time, Able to complete the hat trick here this afternoon for the Connor Chieftains. Gabe, just a sophomore. Another football player for Matt uh, Sir South Yeah, Yeah, you'll see with Coach Sir um, being the head football coach and Coach Robinson now being in the lacrosse um, program here. That's a nice save there because it was a, it was a good little goal. Uh, Great stop by Horner as he was able to beat Daniel Manger, getting his first time in this afternoon for the Connor Chieftains. Yeah, this will be an opportunity for both coaches to get some kids into the Hall Connor game so they can talk about that experience. Um, right there, you, you know, you had a situation where that, uh, the Connor shooter did a really nice job of moving the goalie uh, with, with a couple of fakes, and uh, I was sure it was going to be a score because of how well he did that. But... Uh, Goalie kept with it and was able to make a nice save there and uh, give his team a, a chance to, to keep, it, keep it at 10. Again, you'll see the score in the paper tomorrow and could have been a lot more lopsided if it weren't for the play of the junior goaltender, Alan Horner, who uh, Coach Vaughn says is just an incredible, incredible hard worker and has really evolved into a terrific netminder for his team. Yeah, if you're going to want to, if you're going to build a program, you want to do that with... Um, you want to do that, you know, from your goalie forward, um, because if you have a good solid goalie in a sport like lacrosse, where you're not guaranteed possession every time, you want that person to be both a, a good goal stopper, but also a good defensive communicator, because that person gets to see everything. And I know that uh, Coach Vaughn is working on with him on that piece as well, because uh, he gets to anchor the defense. He was a backup last season, and uh, certainly evolved into a terrific starting net minor this year. I got to give uh, Connor a lot of credit. They've, uh, they've really uh, had a good game plan. Um, the defensive uh, uh, pressure that they've applied has really done a, done a job of stopping some prolific hall scorers into taking long range shots without much. And there's a perfect example, right? Um, just, you know, getting in front of their hands, making all the shots challenged and difficult, and then just doing a better job in transition. Yeah, I was just going to say, Steve, that was my, uh, my next point, next question to you. As they turn that great transition, that initial pass, turning defense into offense, and that created a scoring opportunity right to the right of the net that time. Exactly, and they almost countered, um, you know, very, very well. Oh. Swing and a miss, strike one. Yeah, so that can happen. Again, if, you, if you're... Uh, if you're struggling and you're losing your confidence, you rush things and you, you, forget, your, uh, you forget your timing and your rhythm. That's a great effort by the defender there after the, uh, after the miss to try to keep it alive. But unfortunately, the Hall kids weren't ready for the, for the flick uh, back onto the field. Also, when I said swing and a miss, it was my cheap attempt at a segue to remind everybody that we'll have Mayor's Cup Baseball next Monday afternoon, 4.30. Kids always enjoy it, and, and so do we, Steve. We get to play at the University of Hartford at Fiendella Field. A lot of that uh, situation uh, developed and enhanced by the generous donations of Jeff Bagwell through the years. And uh, we'll be on the air at 4.30. It'll be Jeff Kaplowitz and I, your uh, former partner on the Hall girls basketball sidelines from years ago. That's right, and the facility over there at the University of Hartford is a real gift that we get to uh, have part of our community. It's wonderful that they get to let us use it for uh, the traditional Hall Connor game. It's still called the Mayor's Cup, still, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's so. that's a uh, that's always a fun um, experience. And again, anytime it's Hall Connor, a lot of times these kids came up together, play, being teammates, and now they're rivals. And um, I think it's certainly uh, there's we have so many good coaches. Uh, I know Coach Billing very very well. He uh, is, a, is a longtime friend of mine and a multi-sport coach. And I know he looks forward to that game um, in, in a big way. 
Had a nice conversation with him and uh, Coach Rombie as well uh, last week as we get ready for the broadcast next Monday and uh, looking forward to that one as well. Mike Matthews of Conard, MVP each of the last two years, and he comes back as a senior one more time. Well, that's always a nice thing when you can have your best player be with you for a as long as Conard has. Um, I, uh, I know that, um, oh, it's a nice interception for a uh, little transition play. We have a four and three situation right now. It's very similar to basketball. All right. Uh, it was a great little play. Um, just, um, ooh, that's got oh, a, a Extracurriculars behind the net and no call. Wow. Very surprising there wasn't a uh, slashing call right there at that point. Um, Montes took a lot back Completely there. unnecessary. Uh, apparently didn't, didn't think it was enough to warrant a flag, um, but enough to give possession to Hall right there. Wanted to talk about that last pick that uh, Blashinsky made. I mean, he looked just like uh, a linebacker stepping in front of an intended receiver that time. Well, and that's, you know, that's that's the transfer of, of uh, skills, right? Oh, it's a nice little effort right there. Uh, but your, your your analogy is perfect, and it's it's similar to basketball or even soccer where somebody tries to throw a, what we call a flat pass. You Those flat passes are the most easy to intercept because you can read them, and they take a long time uh, to get from one spot to the next. So we, we often talk to kids about creating angles for your teammates so that those passes don't happen that way. Kyle Conlon on the field for the Warriors. Yeah, Coach, uh, Coach Terry Conlon's his father, has been part of the Hall football program for a number of years. Um, and Kyle, I believe, is uh, another one of those seniors we've recognized today. There's Blashinsky from downtown getting his second goal of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And his 33rd of the season. Mm -hmm. And that elusive first back-to-back -back goal is probably a little too little too late at this point, but it gets hauled within nine. It's 12-3 at the 534 mark here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, and uh, Bl because of the penalty from Connor, Blachinski was able to reward himself with the steal by, by getting his second goal of the game on a nice shot that appeared to be shielded um, by the by the counter defender blocking the goalie off from being able to see that line coming on in. So again, for, for a coach, what you want to do is see if you can't get a little bit, bit of momentum going into tomorrow. Um, that face off, uh, there was a penalty there. So it's, it's going to go to Conard, um, who again will be in no hurry to score at this point. And again, it's a nine goal game, Steve. So one aspect is not going to be more important than another in the final analysis here this afternoon. But a terrific job, again, to give credit to Lagoy in the faceoff circle. It was big, especially early on. Part of the reason why it was allowing his team to go out and establish that early lead that they did. Yeah, it's sort of like a, uh, a prize fight, right? Where you, you want to do body blow, body blow, body, body blow, and really tire out your defender, the person who's your opponent. And I think all those uh, draw controls, I keep calling them draw controls from the girl side, all those face-offs um, really were body blows to the Hall defense, and it really wore them down because every time Connor gains possession, Hall's then up against the ropes, and they've got to be up against the ropes until they either get a stop or they get a save. But instead of that happening, they were getting goals and then getting up against the ropes one more time. Sure. It was just adding to the whole effect. And speaking of the face-off man in particular, that was Lagoy taking that last shot. It was Arendt, but it will be Derek O'Connor putting the ball in play for the road team. Yeah, and you'll, you'll see sometimes in situations like this in final minutes that um, coaches are, might want to have your seniors out there. Um, you might be trying to get a kid a goal who hasn't had one in a long time or for the season, um, and you run some special sets to get that that young man a chance to score in the hall Connor game. Not knowing both teams well enough, I can't speak to that, but often that, that's what'll happen in situations like this. And to your point, Steve, Lucian Mark, one of the players now on the field for Connor, mm. getting his first touches this afternoon. Yeah, so you know, I was a walk-on in college and had, uh, and there he was, had a chance. Mark had an opportunity, big time stop that time. Yeah, see this is, that's a pipe. So we did have a flag. So this is what we don't want to have happen, right? It's Hall Connard. Uh, teams are getting frustrated. You just want the kids to go home safe and not have anything dangerous happen. So Hall just got another little chippy penalty there. 
and um, referees want to take control and call anything that would be uh, deemed over aggressive. Owen Hendricks had the glorious opportunity for Connor, could not convert. Owen, one of eight seniors on the Chieftains playing in their final Connard Hall lacrosse match this afternoon. The others include Jacob Conrad, the backup netminder, Samuel Lafonte, Lucian Mark, who had that opportunity about a half minute earlier, Henry Nidal, Coleman Werner, John Gibbons, and Sebastian Suarez. Wanted to mention Sebi Suarez just for a second, if we could, Steve. I was at one of the football games doing my scout work for the Hall Connard pre Thanksgiving Day battle, and it was I was doing spotting work in the press box for Mr. Bill Watson, the uh, fine public address announcer, and just great overall individual. And Sebi Suarez, I called his name 14 times with tackles in the two and a half quarters that I was there that night. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's incredible, right? That, that's a kid who likes to be aggressive. Um, and it's, it's why Coach Sassimo and Coach Robinson uh, will be encouraging their football kids to be, be playing some lacrosse w uh, when they can. As I was alluding to before, I wanted to just share that when I was a freshman, I got to play and start a number of games as a freshman in college. And my role changed as our teams got better and they recruited players that were much better basketball players than I, but I assumed a role that was sort of like a coach on the bench. But when I went in, it was always fun to hear people cheering for me to try to at least get a shot off. And if sure. I scored, you know, all the kids in the stand or my dorm mates would. And that's what it's like for some of these kids out there. When they don't get a lot of minutes, they get an opportunity to score. Um, you, you'd like to see it happen for them uh, regardless of the situation. Good analogy there. Yeah. yeah, and that's sort of the story of the game right there, right? So uh, well, Hall, microcosm. Yeah, Hall gets a stop. They get a transition play. And not only don't they get a shot off, they, they turn it over, and now they're forced to play defense one more time. Three minutes to go as Lucian Mark, the aforementioned senior, brings it up for the Chieftains. Nidal goes with his pass back behind the net. Daniel Manger, junior attacker, back to Mark. And an interception, and back the other way, Kyle McGoldrick, one of 11 seniors for Hall. Well, this is turning into a true senior game at this point. Uh, both coaches doing the appropriate thing by trying to get as many of them out there as possible uh, for their last hall Connard moments. Again, it's 12-3 the score. Connard's been in control from the outset ever since they took a 4-0 opening quarter lead. Held the Warriors to just one goal in the entire first half, and that was pretty much the story in the game. Want to give credit to those other seniors for Hall. Peter Figge, of course, Theo Blashinsky. We've mentioned his name along with Chris Monis, Will Weberson, Will Miller, Andrew Crivetti, Matt Cashman, J.P. Hers, Kyle Conlon, Kyle McGoldrick, and Evan Duzan. And hopefully Evan's okay. He's standing on the sideline without his helmet. So obviously uh, done for the afternoon after that third quarter injury. Hopefully he's going to be okay. And back in the lineup at Haddam Killingworth tomorrow. Yeah, you assume that, uh, you know, given the way he looks, uh, he doesn't appear to be uh, struggling in any, in any capacity. It's probably just precautionary, and given the score, why not have him as healthy as possible for tomorrow? All right, so we got a little bit of a flag. It's probably going to be a trip of some sort and go back to Hall. Uh, minute 25, uh, one of these young men would like to get another goal in, in the tally and uh, get it a little bit uh, closer. Um, you'll notice that Hall has not called any timeouts. They're probably happy enough just to walk away, get some rest tonight, and, uh, and call it a day. If Hall gets one more goal, Steve, we'll have the exact same final score as a year ago. Is that right? Yeah, when the Chieftains won 12-4. to 4. You're impressive, Pete, when you recognize things like that. Uh, you know, you're around sports so much, and it's... Uh, Easy it's for me to read, though, but thanks <laughs> for the credit. <laughs> but thanks, Steve. Uh, well, it's good. I, lo I love the way you uh, get excited for these hall Connor matchups, and you're, uh, you're, you're so good at what you do. So it's a real treat to be able to be on the air with you, and uh, I'm a total rookie, obviously, and uh, it's nice to learn... Learn from pros. Well, great working with you and having you for, for lacrosse and soccer is, uh, is a blessing for us, I'll tell you. 
Lashinsky's oh. shot is blocked. Oh, my. Yeah, that was point blank at that young man, and uh, thankfully he, he appears to be okay. Um, almost as if the ball didn't have a chance to gain its momentum. Uh, number 18, we got we to gotta give him a call out. Yeah, uh, Colbert Johnson. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a brave stop by that young man and is showing no signs of wear. Uh, maybe it's hurting and he doesn't want to let uh, Blachinski know it got him. Uh, <laughs> that could be part of the gamesmanship, right? Yeah, so usually you go home and you ice that one and uh, – you don't touch it until no one's looking. <laughs> Good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Conran with the ball. Yeah. In the midfield, Owen Hendricks leading the rush for the counter chieftains. Conran's done a really nice job on the, on the few times he's had to save uh, on his clears. Uh, has, has not forced things. He obviously has good stick skills for a goalie and has, has uh, once they've earned the possession, he's helped them keep it in transition. So Connor will just run this out. Uh, Hall and Connor kids uh, will say good game to each other, and uh, they'll call it another uh, year for this rivalry. Unless, of course, they meet in states by some uh, well, possibility. Could happen. Final score, Connor 12 and Hall 3. As they mob each other, the Chieftains do. They win for a sixth consecutive time in the rivalry. And they'll end the regular season in Matt Sersosimo's first year as head coach over the 500 mark at 8-7. and seven. As Steve said, they get ready for states down the road. We're going to have a post-game interview with uh, Matt Sersosimo and one of his players. Steve, some uh, final comments on the boys' game. No, and obviously this was Connard's day. Uh, they were the better team in the midfield, on the defensive side, and on the attack. You know, you talk about golf. Are you good in your long game, your driving, your short game, or your putting? Well, Connor was the better team in all three areas today. Kudos to Coach Rosasimo and the young men from Connor, and uh, good luck to Hall tomorrow as they uh, look to bounce back. Well said. Thanks, Steve. Steve Boyle joining us, and we'll get ready for the girls' game. But first, our post-game interview in a few minutes or so with Matt Rosasimo and uh, hopefully Sebastian Suarez or one of the victorious Connor chieftains. Again, they defeat Hall by the count of 12 to three here at Chalmers Stadium this afternoon in the first of our lacrosse doubleheader. We'll come back with more right after this on Channel 5.
blocking the spot. You keep moving. Oh, sorry. One two, one two, one two, one two. Soft to get all the water all the way over there, please. Off their base. Just a heads up, ladies and gentlemen. We will have the Paul and Connor senior recognition session start at about quarter of or ten of at the latest. Thank you. Hey, lady, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. What about you? Oh, very well. What made it? Oh, we made it through. Yeah, we're almost done. done. Matt, congratulations. Terrific win today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Excelling in all facets of the game. You know, one in particular, you talked about Lagoy, your face-off specialist. He allowed you, I think, to get off to that good start because he was so dominant in the face-off circle in the first quarter. John really is, we like to tell Johnny that he's a momentum builder for us. And if he can execute his job on the face-offs and Sebi on the wings, Paul Wilson on the wings, if they can do their job, uh, they can create possessions for us, which can create momentum for us on offense. Talk about defensively. You had a game plan to stop Theo Bolashinsky, even though he only got on the board twice. Looked like you were able to frustrate him and contain him for much of the day, and that allowed you to build that big lead as well. Well, you know, he's such a good player, and he's such a good athlete. And when the ball's in his stick, we have to be conscious of that. And I think when that happened, we understood it as a defensive unit that everyone's ears went up a little bit quicker, and our slides were a little bit faster. Everyone was in tune because he can hurt you in a second. If you give him an inch, as you saw on his last goal, he's going to take it and he's going to rip it. So we had to continue to press out on him. And I thought our defense executed very well today. Coach Feff, Coach Garneau uh, installed the game plan and they did a great job executing it. The kids did. Talk about the offense. I think going forward, as you look forward to the states, Matt, that makes you tough to defend is that you have a number of different weapons that can beat you. And it's not just Sir Deckney. I saw Suarez uh, rise to the occasion today. And you have others that can put the ball in the back of the net, too. You know, that's the neat thing. W within the team concept of the game on offense, there's individual performances. And we always try to talk about it being a team game because if one guy's got the hot hand, we want to try to ride that guy. And Gabe, being a sophomore in his first varsity Hall Connor game, really stepped up big and finished the ball for us really well today. So that was good to see, and we got to continue to ride that. His momentum that he created today. But, um, you know, it, just, it goes to show you how unselfish the offensive players are. Speaking of momentum, a few weeks back, you had a double overtime win against Northwest. That spurred on a nice winning streak. You're six and two since then. You feel good about the team where they are going into states? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, w w I think we continue to take a step forward each day that we come out to practice. Um, you know, we've had some tough opponents recently, and, but I think we've learned from that. We've grown from that, and I think a little bit of that showed today. And, you know, we're hopeful that we can continue to practice hard, do all the right things on and off the field, and be able to contend when it comes to playoff time. Best of luck in that uh, second season, as it were. All right. Thanks, Pete. I appreciate it. Okay. Matt Sousasimo joining us, the victorious coach here. As uh, the Connor Chieftains winning, we're looking for uh, one of the Suarez boys to come. But uh, I will go good. That, that's... Okay, I appreciate that. Before he comes, now you get to go root for the misses. That's right. The, the, the real coach, see. Uh -huh. Come on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Appreciate it. Matsu Sasebo, thank you as uh, the Connor Chieftains win. Mr. Suarez, good job today. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
How does it feel to uh, have a big part and a big victory here this afternoon to beat the Crosstown Rivals, the Hall Warriors? It's amazing. Uh, since the beginning of my freshman year, I've always wanted to play Hall and just every day grinding on the practice field, getting better better every day, getting those ground balls, creating offense. It just feels amazing to just get this victory. I was talking to Coach C about the win that you had against Northwest a few weeks back when you won in double overtime. It was a very exciting win. You're 6-2 and two since then. That was certainly the win that got you guys on your way. Yes, it was. It was a very tough win, and we just had to, it was the key victory that we just needed to bump ourselves and push ourselves forward to keep going the way we are now. You going to stay and watch the girls game? I think so. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Best of luck in the state tournament. Thank you. Okay. So the Connor Chieftains victorious here this afternoon. They win it by the counts of 12-3. to 3. And uh, if you're watching live, we'll have double header action for you as the girls will start at about 6 o'clock tonight. Again, it's Hall against Connor. But again, the final score for the final time in boys' action today was Connor 12 and Hall 3. Until next time, Pete Lamoureux, thanks for watching and so long.